Let's begin to perform wudu. It is important that you perform the following steps of wudu in order. Step 1. Begin in the name of Allah by saying, Bismillah. Step 2. Completely wash the hands, including the wrists and between the fingers, three times. Step 3. Put water into your mouth using the right hand. Swirl it around in your mouth, then expel. Do this three times. Step 4. Sniff water into the nostrils as far as possible with the right hand and then blow it out using the left hand. Do this three times. Step 5. Washing the face from the forehead to the chin and from the left earlobe to the right earlobe, making sure the whole face is washed. Do this three times. The one who has a beard should also run the wet fingers through it. Step 6. Wash the right arm beginning at the fingertips, washing the entire hand and arm up to and including the elbow. Do this three times. The same is done for the left arm beginning at the fingertips, washing the entire hand and arm up to and including the elbow. Do this three times. Step 7. Starting at the fringe, moving the hands to the back of the hairline and then back to the fringe all in one movement. This is done once only. Step 8. Wipe the insides of both ears with the index fingers and the back of the ears with the thumbs. This is done only once. Step 9. Wash the right foot including the ankle. Make sure between the toes are also washed using the small pinky finger. Do this three times. The same is done for the left foot, washing it up to and including the ankle, ensuring you wash between the toes using the small pinky finger. Do this three times. Step 10. It is preferred to seal your wudu with a declaration of faith, saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Upon the completion of the steps of wudu one is now ready to pray as long as they don't nullify the wudu Actions that nullify wudu. This includes passing urine or feces, passing wind. Other things that nullify wudu include deep sleep, whereby one loses awareness, unconsciousness or intoxication, touching the private parts with the hand and fingers without a barrier, intimate relations between husband and wife, if a person forgets whether they have nullified their wudu or not, then this does not nullify their ablution, regardless of whether the person is praying or not, until they are certain that they have nullified their ablution. Don't forget that you must perform the steps of wudu in order. To commence the prayer, stand up, after having fulfilled all its preconditions, which are facing the direction of Kaaba, known as Al Qibla, covering parts of the body which are mandatory to cover, known as Al Awra, being in the state of ritual purity, being fully attentive in your heart and mind of the particular prayer which you intend to perform without uttering the intention. You should pray behind an object as high as a handspan, or directly behind a wall, a pillar, or any other similar object, as this was the proven practice of the Prophet ﷺ. This object is known as sutra. To start the prayer, you must say, Allahu Akbar, which means, Allah is the greatest. This phrase is known as, Takbiratul Ihram. There is no other phrase which can replace this takbirah. 
This takbira must be said while standing, because the Prophet ﷺ said what means, Say the takbir while standing. If you are unable to pray while standing due to illness, for example, then you should do your best to pray in any other position which is physically possible. In any case, however, you must certainly say the takbira. During this takbira, do not excessively extend the vowel, which is the A in the middle of the word Allah. The Imam leading a congregational prayer shall raise his voice while saying this takbira so those behind him can hear it. If you are praying alone or behind an Imam, you need not say this takbira loudly. However, you must move your tongue with the phrase as authentically reported. Raise your hands while saying the initial takbira. It has been authentically reported in the Sunnah that you may raise your hands just before, during, or just after saying this takbira. While raising your hands, keep them spread open without cupping. Your fingers shall not be closed tight nor widely spread apart. Your fingers shall reach the level of your shoulders. This is one of the two authentic forms of raising one's hands. The other is for the fingers to reach the earlobes. You may choose either of these two forms. Raising the hands apply to both men and women. If you are unable to raise one of your hands due to a certain ailment, you should still raise the other one in order to apply as much of the sunnah as possible. Where should you place your hands after this takbira? You should place them on your chest with the right hand over the left one. There are two forms of putting the right hand over the left one. The first is to place the right hand flat over the left hand, wrist, and arm. The second is to grab the left hand with the right hand. If you alternate between these two forms, your practice would then perfectly concur with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Place your hands on your chest and not on your navel, nor below it, nor above the chest. Some scholars state that you should place them between your breasts. It is not permitted to place the hands on the waist during prayer which contradicts appropriate submissiveness to Allah. You shall always gaze at the floor in humility during prayer, lowering your head and looking to the place of your prostration, except when you are reciting a tashahud, in which case you should keep your gaze at your index finger while moving it. This will be further explained in the presentation. Dear Muslim, placing your hands on the chest and lowering your head while looking at the place of prostration reflects submissiveness before Allah the Almighty. It is also a reflection of good manners before one's Lord. You must keenly maintain this during your prayer. And remember that Allah turns His face towards the face of His slave during the prayer for as long as He does not gaze away. You must struggle to keep shaitan from distracting you during prayer. If the whispers of shaitan become too powerful, it is permitted for you to seek refuge in Allah and lightly spit three times to your left without emitting any spittle. Immediately after this takbira, initiate your prayer by reciting one of the great opening supplications known as Dua ul istiftah the companions of the Prophet ﷺ asked him about what he says when he briefly pauses in silence after the initial takbira. So he taught them the opening supplications of the prayer. There are various supplications you can say at the start of the prayer. It is best to alternate between them in different prayers. Among the known opening supplications is saying, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk which means glory and praise is due to you O Allah blessed is your name lofty is your greatness and there is no deity worthy of worship except you another opening supplication is 
اللهم باعد بيني وبين خطاياي كما باعدت بين المشرق والمغرب اللهم نقني من خطاياي كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس اللهم اغسلني من خطاياي بالماء والثلج والبرد which means oh Allah distance me from my sins as you have distanced the east from the west O oh Allah Cleanse me from my sins as a white garment is cleansed from filth. O oh Allah, wash my sins away with water, snow, and hail. There are other opening supplications which were reported to have been said by the Prophet ﷺ, especially during the optional night prayers, Qiyamul Layl. For more information about these supplications and other details, you can refer to books written by scholars. A good example of such books is the one written by the great scholar Al-Albani, Rahimahullah, which is titled, The Prophet's Prayer Described from Beginning to End as Though You See It. After the opening supplication, you shall take refuge in Allah from Shaytan before recitation by saying, A'udhu Billahi min shaytan rajim مِنْ هَمْزِهِ وَنَفْخِهِ وَنَفْثِهِ which means I seek the protection of Allah from the cursed satin from his whispering, blowing and clammy breath. It has also been authentically reported that the Prophet ﷺ would occasionally say instead أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ السَّمِيعِ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ مِنْ هَمْزِهِ وَنَفْخِهِ وَنَفْثِهِ which means I seek the protection of Allah, the all-hearing, the all-knowing, from the cursed satin, from his whispering, blowing, and clammy breath. This is only to be said before recitation at the beginning of the first rak'ah, as per the opinion of a number of scholars. Then say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, which means, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. This phrase is known as Al-Basmalah. The most authentic opinion of the scholars is that you must not say this phrase loudly. Then recite Surah Al-Fatiha as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what means no prayer is valid for those who do not recite Al-Fatiha within them. If a person is new to Islam or does not speak Arabic and cannot recite Al-Fatiha, then he may alternatively say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Which means, glory is due to Allah, praise is due to Allah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Allah is the greatest. There is neither any change of condition nor any power except by the will of Allah. It is an obligation to recite Surah Al-Fatiha in both the quiet and the loud prayers and to say Ameen after finishing its recitation, extending its vowel, the E. In the loud prayer, the word Ameen is also said loudly. After reciting Al-Fatiha, recite another chapter from the Quran whether short or long. When you finish the recitation, pause long enough to take a breath, and then raise your hands while saying Allahu Akbar, just before bowing down into the position of Ruku'ah. The benefit of this pause is that it marks a clear separation between the end of the recitation and the takbirah of bowing. This is the second pause reported to have been performed by the Prophet ﷺ. The first being after the initial takbirah of the prayer. There is no evidence that he paused between Al-Fatiha and the following surah. Then bow down in ruku'ah, placing your hands firmly on your knees with your fingers spread apart while keeping the head and back level. The Prophet ﷺ used to level his back to the extent that if water were to be poured on his back, it would have settled there. While bowing in a tranquil manner, say, 
سبحان ربي العظيم which means glorified is my lord the almighty or you can say سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده which means glorified is my lord the almighty and all praise is his both are authentic narrations you may also add سبوح قدوس رب الملائكة والروح which means glory to you most holy you are lord of the angels and the holy spirit it has also been reported that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said during ruku' سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اللهم اغفر لي which means glory and praise are due to you O Allah I beg forgiveness for my sins the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has forbidden reciting the Quran during bowing or prostrating after you complete ruku' raise your head and hands from the bowing position while saying سمع الله لمن حمده which means Allah hears he who thanks him this phrase is said whether you are leading the prayer or praying alone when you reach the standing position say ربنا ولك الحمد which means our Lord and for you is all praise or you can say ربنا لك الحمد which means our Lord for you is all praise both are authentic narrations one with and one without the letter wa meaning and you may say instead one of the following supplications both of which are also authentic اللهم ربنا ولك الحمد which means O oh Allah our Lord and for you is all praise or Allahumma Rabbana Laka Alhamd which means O oh Allah our Lord for you is all praise it is preferred to add the following to any of the above supplications Mil as samawati wa mil al arb wa mil ama shita min shayim bad which means the heavens, the earth, and all that which you will, in addition, are abundant with your praise. This is a magnificent way of praising Allah, which is raised by the angels to the heavens. Once in the upright position, you must remain standing for a period similar to that of your rukur, as this is an important pillar. A question arises here. Where does the person put his hands after standing up from the position of bowing? After straightening up from bowing, one should place his hands back on his chest just as they were prior to going into the bowing position. If he keeps his hands down by his sides, however, this would concur with the opinion of a group of scholars who consider this to be in accordance with the sunnah. Go down to the floor for the position of prostration, sujood, while saying, Allahu Akbar. Another question arises here. Does a person go down into the position of sujood, placing his hands on the floor first or his knees? The scholars have differed regarding the issue whether the hands or the knees should reach the floor first. We need to know which of the two opinions concurs more with the Sunnah because each group of scholars has substantial evidence to prove their opinion. Perhaps the sounder opinion is of those who rule that one must go down into the position of prostration placing his hands on the floor first. It is noteworthy to say that either of the two ways is acceptable as this is not an issue over which one should condemn those who hold a contrary opinion, because the scholars themselves have differed regarding their understanding of the relevant texts from the Sunnah. During sujood, you must allow the following seven body parts to touch the floor. The base of the toes of the right and left feet, the right and left knees, the right and left hands flat and not cupped, 
and the forehead and nose, which is considered as one part for this purpose. While prostrating, you shall maintain ample distance between the following body parts in a manner that is not exaggerated. Elbows and sides, abdomen and thighs, and thighs and the back side of the legs below the knees. Then say while prostrating, Subhan Rabbi al-A'la, which means, Glorified is my Lord, the Most High. You may also say, Subhan Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi, which means, Glorified is my Lord, the Most High, and all praise is His. You may also add, Subuhun Quddus, Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh, which means, Glory to you, most holy you are, Lord of the angels and the Holy Spirit. It is also recommended to say, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Allahumma ghfirli, which means, Glory and praise are due to you, O Allah. I beg forgiveness for my sins. You shall then raise your head from sujood while saying Allahu Akbar and sit on the floor. While sitting, lay your left foot flat on the floor, sitting on it, and keep the right foot in the upright position, with its toes bent and pointing towards the direction of Qibla. Keep your hands flat on your thighs, without gaps between the fingers. This is the authentic form of Sunnah for sitting between the two prostrations, which is known as Aliftirash. It is from the Sunnah to say while sitting in this position, Rabbi Ghfirli, Rabbi Ghfirli, which means, O oh my Lord, forgive me, O oh my Lord, forgive me. You could repeat this as many times as you wish. You may also say, Rabbi Ghfirli Warhamni, Wajburni Warfani, Wahdini Waafini Warzukni, which means, O oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy upon me, console me, guide me, and grant me good health and sustenance. This is a great supplication which combines both the good of this life and the hereafter. To concur with the Sunnah, you shall make sitting between the two prostrations equal in duration to that of your prostration, as there are four pillars of prayer which you should make similar in duration. These are bowing, rukur, standing up after bowing, prostration, sujood, and sitting between the two prostrations. Now go down to the second sujood while saying Allahu Akbar, repeating the same supplications and maintaining the same position described during the first sujood. You shall then raise your head from the second sujood and sit very briefly on the floor. Then, using your hands while closed in a fist, stand up to perform the second rak'ah in the same manner described earlier. Sitting briefly after the second sujood, which is known as Jilsatul Istiraha, meaning the rest sitting, is also repeated after the third rak'ah in a four rak'ah prayer. After completing the second sujood of the second rak'ah, raise your head while saying Allahu Akbar and sit on the floor for tashahud. Sitting for tashahud at the end of a two rak'ah prayer shall be done in the same manner as sitting between the two prostrations in the position known as aliftirash. You shall also sit in the same manner aliftirash during the first tashahud of the three or four rak'ah prayers. While sitting for tashahud, place your left hand flat on your left knee, place your right hand on your right thigh, with your right fingers closed in a fist, except the index finger. The form of positioning the right index finger in the sunnah is to raise it, slightly curved and pointed towards the direction of qibla, while moving it during supplication. You shall also join your thumb and middle finger of the right hand forming the shape of a ring. Another form of doing this 
is to place your thumb tightly on the middle finger. Both these forms are reported to have been practiced by the Prophet ﷺ. While seated in this position, recite at tahiyyat which has many confirmed versions reported to have been said by the Prophet ﷺ. You may alternate between the different authentic versions in different prayers. The most famous version of at tahiyyat is the one reported by Ibn Mas'ud and adopted by many scholars in which one says At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh which means glorification is for Allah. All acts of worship and good deeds are for Him. May Allah send peace, His mercy and blessings upon you, O Prophet. May peace be upon us and upon all righteous slaves of Allah. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. There is another version of at tahiyyat which was reported by Ibn Abbas in which one says at tahiyyat al mubarakat al salawat al tayyibat lillah assalamu alayka ayyuha an nabiy wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah al salihin ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ Which means, blessed glorification, all acts of worship and good deeds are for Allah. May Allah send peace, His mercy and blessings upon you, O Prophet. May peace be upon us and upon all righteous slaves of Allah. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, some of the companions started to say, Assalamu ala nabi, meaning, peace upon the Prophet, thus addressing a person who is no longer present among them. Instead of saying, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, as mentioned earlier, meaning, peace upon you, O Prophet which implies that you are addressing someone whom you can see. If you are praying a three or four rak'ah prayer, such as Maghrib or Isha, you shall now use your hands while closed in a fist to stand up and perform the subsequent rak'ah in the same manner described earlier. Following recitation of at tahiyyat in a two rak'ah prayer, or after the last tashahud in a three or four rak'ah prayer, add the following supplication. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد which means O oh Allah exalt the mention of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad just as you exalted the mention of Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim verily you are of lofty praise and majesty O oh Allah send blessings upon Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad, just as you sent blessings upon Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim. Verily, you are of lofty praise and majesty. There are many authentic variations of this supplication. It is recommended that you alternate between them in different prayers. Another variation is to say, اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته 
كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد which means O oh Allah exalt the mention of Muhammad and his wives and offsprings just as you exalted the mention of the family of Ibrahim O oh Allah send blessings upon Muhammad and upon his wives and offsprings just as you sent blessings upon the family of Ibrahim verily you are of lofty praise and majesty during the last tashahud in a three or four rak'ah prayer you shall sit in the position known as at tawarruk in this position sit with your left thigh touching the floor and your left foot protruding under the right leg raising your right foot in the upright position you may also lay your right foot flat on the floor instead of having it upright as authentically reported you shall also grab your left knee with your left hand leaning onto it with your left arm place your right hand on your right thigh closing your right fingers in a fist except the index finger which you shall move slightly curved and pointed towards the direction of Qibla as you did in the first tashahud. You shall continue to move the right index finger while supplicating until you conclude the prayer with salam. It has been reported that the Prophet ﷺ said what means, after one of you has finished his last tashahud, he shall seek refuge in Allah from four things by saying, اللهم إني أعوذ بك من عذاب جهنم ومن عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال which means O oh Allah I seek refuge in you from the punishment of hell the torment of the grave the tribulations of life and death and the evil afflictions of the Antichrist after this, you may say any supplication you wish for yourself. Many supplications have been reported to have been said by the Prophet ﷺ after the final tashahud, such as, Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi zulman kathira, wa la yaghfiru al-dhunub illa ant, faghfir li maghfiratan min indik, وَرْحَمْنِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Which means, O oh Allah, I have considerably wronged myself. There is none to forgive sins but you. So grant me pardon and have mercy upon me. Verily, you are most forgiving, most compassionate. The Prophet ﷺ taught this great supplication to his friend Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu who was the most beloved person to him among all people. When he asked the Prophet ﷺ to teach him a supplication to say after the last tashahud. Another authentic supplication to say before concluding the prayer is, Allahumma ghfir li ma qaddamtu wa ma akhart, wa ma asrartu wa ma a'lantu wa ma asraft, wa ma anta a'lamu bihi minni, أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت which means O oh Allah forgive my former and latter sins those which I have secretly committed and those which I have openly committed forgive what I have transgressed and those faults of mine of which you have better knowledge than I do you alone can send whomever you wish to paradise, and you alone can send whomever you wish to the hellfire. There is no deity worthy of worship except you. The following are examples of violations and mistakes which some people commit during their prayer. Saying the initial takbir while having one's back bent and therefore not standing upright. This is what some people do when they rush into the mosque while the Imam is bowing down. They raise their hands and say takbir while their backs are bent so as not to miss the rak'ah. This is an incorrect way of initiating the prayer and could void it. You must say the takbir while standing with your back completely in the upright position. 
Some people do not have any tranquility during their prayer. They seem to perform it at the same speed that a crow pecks at the ground. You must not shorten your prayer in a way which would contradict or nullify the necessary submissiveness and tranquility. Failing to maintain tranquility could result in rejection of the prayer by Allah. Indeed, it would be as if such a person did not pray at all. Because the Prophet ﷺ said to a man who prayed in this manner, what means, go and pray again because you did not pray. Some people say the initial takbir while standing alone in a row. The Prophet ﷺ said what means, the prayer of one who prays alone in a row is not accepted. However, if you have a legitimate excuse, such as not being able to find another person to stand with you in the row, and you fear missing the prayer by waiting, then you may pray alone in the row, and your prayer will be correct. Some people raise the Imam in his movements. To do so is a sin. If you say Amin before the Imam, then you will miss a great reward. Because Allah forgives the previous sins for those who say Amin at the same time as the angels. And the angels only start to say Amin after the Imam starts to say it. Some people do not recite correctly during their prayer. They neither move their lips nor their tongues while reciting Quran. This is not considered recitation. Rather, it is merely contemplating the verses of Quran in one's mind. Some people bow incorrectly, with their backs halfway between the upright and bowing positions. You must keep your back and head level throughout the rukua. Some people do not prostrate on the seven parts on which one must prostrate. For example, they may have their feet off the floor while in prostration or place one foot upon another. Some people place their arms on the floor during prostration, thereby resembling a sitting dog. The Prophet ﷺ has forbidden placing the arms on the floor in such a manner. He would raise them off the floor with his arms spread away from his body to the extent that one could see his armpits. If you are praying in congregation, however, then you should not exaggerate in rising or spreading your arms to avoid harming those praying next to you, but you must raise your elbows off the floor. Some people lean against a wall or a pillar during their prayer, to the point that if the wall or pillar were to be removed, they would collapse to the floor. Such a prayer is incorrect because the person praying in such a manner is not considered to be standing. Some people do not place their nose tightly on the ground during prostration. Some people are inattentive during prayer and not aware of what is being recited. Some do not even realize what they themselves are saying while praying. Also, during prayer, their eyes and hearts wander about. This reduces their reward and contradicts submissiveness and tranquility in prayer. Dear Muslim brother and sister, there are a number of violations which people commit while praying which could nullify the prayer. Others entail sins or disliked acts prohibited by Allah. Therefore, you must be careful not to commit such violations in order to preserve the completeness of your prayer. We ask Allah the Almighty to grant us knowledge from what we have learned, and we ask Him to enlighten us in our religion and enable us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We ask Him to accept our deeds and forgive our sins and shortcomings.